Hey, we're live, episode 71. Got an amazing special guest, actually, a, and a good friend of ours, uh, Dr. Shane Morris, with us this morning. And, of course, our, our main expert, Dr. Dan Pompa. We're really excited. Um, this is a huge topic, a lot of interest, a lot of emails, um, especially from our female audience, on your gut. You know, we're going to talk about, throw out some buzzwords like microbiome, phage, some big scientific words. Um, Dr. Shane is a PhD biochemist, so some of those will just squeak out of them. Um, but between the uh, interaction between Dr. Pompa and Shane, we're going to get some great truth on gut health, um, how to get control of it, how it affects you at the genetic you know, level, all kinds of great things today. If you want to learn about your, um, your gut health today, you've turned on to the right show. Dr. Shane, welcome. Dr. Pompa, take a hold of the reins and let's get on this topic about gut health today. Well, well, hey Shane, Dr. Shane, let's decide right now if we're going to call it phage or phage. Now, the, I think the correct is phage. However, it is, we always, indeed. Phage is the correct term. Right, we always evolve back no. into phage, right? So we all do that for sure. But uh, phage. So we'll try to keep ourselves on the, the phage word, um, you know. So, But anyways, look, this is a topic, uh, Dr. Shane, that you know a lot about. It's a topic that interests me some years ago. And, um, you know, just understanding what these little guys are. When we talk, when we talk about the microbiome, I, I think everybody knows all the probiotics and all the buzzwords there. But what the heck are bacteriophage, Dr. Shane, and why are they so significant for a healthy gut and microbiome? And guys, when we throw out that word microbiome, we simply mean all the good bacteria, bad bacteria, fungus, viruses, all of these organisms that live in the gut. That's the microbiome. When even it's parasites, right, Dr. Pompa? That's right, even parasites. When that's healthy, you're healthy. When that's healthy, you have a healthy immune system. Your brain works normal. But what the heck are these phage guys all about? You mean yeah, these phage, phage guys phage. are pretty amazing. So when you think about bacteria and yeast and fungi, they're very, very small, right? And they're when we talk about our overall bacterial load, we carry throughout our gastrointestinal tract or our gut billions and billions of them. Now take it one step smaller, you could literally fit a thousand phage inside of a bacteria. So they're extremely small. And what we think their job is, is they're essentially a virus that keeps the bacterial cultures in check. And when we think about it, this is both good and bad. Right, so Dr. Pompa and, and Warren, you guys have all experienced through your years of clinical practice dysbiosis and um, SIBO and all these issues where the GI gets a little bit disrupted. For the most part, we usually focus on the pathogens to do that disruption, but in many instances, it's the good guys growing where they shouldn't be growing. Right, we don't want good guys in places they shouldn't be. Right. So in those instances, we, we, go, we turn to herbs, we turn to diet, we turn to so many amazing things to help us, but a lot of times that leaves us with questions when we can't quite make it happen with, with your patients. And so this is an old technology. Bacterial phage have been on the planet as long as we have. They are, like I mentioned, they're a virus that only attacks bacteria. They're completely harmless to us. And they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. They're in every ocean, in every river, in every soil. There's literally trillions of them. There's there's more though of phage than there are. Oh no, we just locked Doctor Doctor Shane. Yeah, uh, his I saw his reception going in and out. Yeah, I noticed that. Well, while we get him back, uh, Warren, you can kind of work on that. But um, you know. I had I wanted to bring this back really quick because there's something that I was going to ask you, Dr. Pomp, at the beginning of the show, and I think it's, it's timely and it'd be a reason. It'll also explain the reason why I haven't been on the show for a couple weeks, but where do you, where does a human microbiome start? Ah, uh, from mama. Yeah, so Warren just had his new baby, um, of course, and yeah, so you inherit your microbiome, your good, bad, all these bacteria, bacteriophage that we're talking about, which are actually these little viruses. But yeah, you inherit that from your mom when you come through your uterus. So if mom has a good microbiome, a good balance of these org microorganisms, then guess what? Baby does. If mom doesn't, baby doesn't. If Oh, if baby doesn't go through the birth canal, 
That's what I wanted to bring out. Yep. Did I lose you guys for a second? So anyway, oh, we were just we kind of segue because we lost you. Yeah, no, we lost yeah, you. That was very very peculiar. Sorry about that. Yeah. So we, you know, back we just, to the phage though. The phage are nature's way of balancing all the bacteria that we live with. How do they do that? Well, phage actually destroy bacteria, and there is a there is a phage for every bacteria species. So of course we have phage for E. coli, phage for salmonella, phage for staph, phage for clostridium, and so on and so forth. So the brilliance is they're already in you, they're around you. But what we can do as as clinicians and, and healers and scientists is we can say, well, we want to take advantage of these phage and and load them when we need them. Uh, it's no different than these old stories that you guys may have heard where they take people to rivers, people that had leprosy, and they, they doused them in a river. And this was back in you know, the 1900s. And then, amazingly, they would heal. Their sores would start healing. Well, since that time, we've studied those rivers like the Ganges, and they have phage that kill leprosy. So they're just an amazing little virus that kills bacteria, and that is an amazing part of keeping our microbiome healthy. So leprosy is a microbiome issue on the skin? Yeah, it's a, it's a bacterium that attacks your skin. Right? It took us years to figure that out, of course, because we knew about it, the disease before we looked at the possible um, issues. However, so what we look at phage as is they are a prebiotic. That's what we like to, to refer to them as, is a prebiotic. They allow for the good bacteria to flourish, or the bacteria you want to flourish, by allowing the phage to keep the other elements of the terrain under control, if that makes sense. Well, and, and Dr. Jack, I can tell you from a clinical perspective, uh, you spend much of your days in the laboratory. I spend you know, many of my days you know, working with very, very sick people, right? And you know, when their brain doesn't work, you know, when their gut doesn't work, obviously, and when they have immune challenges, you know, whether it's autoimmune with different things, we know that the microbiome, according to studies, affects these things greatly. I mean, the more and more studies come out to show that a balanced bacteria in the, this gut right here, or this brain, because this is actually called the second brain, dramatically affects the way this brain works. We look at people who can't lose weight we can actually see certain shifts in that microbiome um, for the negative and realize that that's, a, that's somebody who's going to have trouble losing weight. Or we have see people who have certain you know, memory problems, depression, certain psychological problems, and now they've correlated certain bacteria down here with this. Matter of fact, um, you've heard me talk a lot about Stephanie Seneff's work from uh, you know, MIT. She's the senior scientist there showing that glyphosate, a chemical that is obsequious, you know, in our food supply right now, spraying it on every grain, every conventional grain, I've written many articles about it, well, you know, this chemical destroys certain bacteria in the gut, which we need to make certain neurotransmitters for our brain to work. So, I mean, I, I say all that just to show the people the correlation of why this is such an important topic. You know, because so many people today have problems here, and so many people have problems with their immune system, you know, with autoimmune, and this balance of bacteria really plays a role. So from a clinical perspective, I can tell you, Shane, throwing more probiotics at the gut, uh, hoping for a good result, which we see that in the autism world, we see that in practically every natural practitioner. My gosh, we see it on TV now. You know, use probiotics for this, use probiotics for that, or yogurt, we are, you know, everyone's advertising it. However, I find that often it doesn't work. Well, why? And what I hear you saying, and what I see clinically, is that some of these bad guys, like E. coli, which is probably the number one bad guy that keeps your good bacteria from taking root. So there's practitioners just throwing more and more good bacteria in for the form of probiotics down their throat. And yet, the E. coli are just too darn strong. So going in there with a bacteriophage like the product EC that you created, uh, Warren, I don't know if you have the product. I do downstairs. I I, I probably do in, in, in my uh, cupboard. In a minute, I'll run down while you guys. Warren's cupboard. You've been there. It has everything. Oh, yeah, and mine too. You've been there too. <laughs> so we mine have stacks all. deep. I want to show Shane. I mean, just so you know. 
I keep all, all my systemic formulas just in case I yeah, need them. But, they, we've ran down with the thing and showed buffer call, and they see systemic Coming everyone. Back. And by the way, I don't know if we gave Shane the the proper formal uh, introduction. No, he, he did he did well. Yes. Okay. But Shane is the leading biochemist for systemic formulas, and uh, you know, hey, look, I, I use uh, you know a lot of different products, like most of you. You know, we have practitioners watching, and uh, we also have you know uh, public watching. You know, it, it's it is all over Warren and my cabinet systemic formulas and uh, for many reasons that we've talked about you know Shane uh, I think you make the finest products in the world I do I, I think that you're one of the brightest you know fellows that I know man and we, we have some with, great it, with integrity that's what I yeah. love about you, you know, and my interest in cellular healing has been years and years and matter of fact Shane I've talked about you on so many of these shows so that you know most people are like oh so that's the guy yeah but, uh, you know I mean we, we became kindred brothers you know, talking about the cell. My interest of the cell was a clinical, from a clinical aspect and clinical experience. Your interest was from years of study through your biochemistry, you know, your degree. I mean, you know, we have great talks there. So anyways, that's more of the introduction. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, it's funny that you, when you go back to your clinical side, the, you know, there's so many things you talked about that damage the cell, but that also damage the microbiome, right? That damage the bacteria within us, whether it's the work that you've mentioned with Stephanie, the, the mercury, you know, the heavy metals, the uh, organophosphates, the organochlorides, you know, PCBs. <clears throat> what, what we should point out is I think many people are getting a, a, an understanding that, wow, those things are not good for us. They're in our diet. They're in our lifestyles. They're in our water. But what, what we can now say, I think, confidently, at least we will be the first people saying it, Dr. Pompa, you and I, is they can also hurt, hurt our phage microbiota, right? They can hurt the things that are keeping the bacteria in the prebiotic environment in check. Right. So they're very sensitive. When we, when we grow these things and we manufacture them, they're, they're not the toughest guys in the world. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised that they're a little bit of the carrot canary in the coal mine. They're, you, you hurt your phage dynamic. Now the now the bacterial dynamic comes out of sorts, and now you have what you mentioned. You know, you lead to GI dysfunction. You lead to neurological, immunological. Uh, we have all these, you know, metabolic, all these struggles. But it begins with some of the most amazing little creatures, so to speak, our our microbiome, right? You know, and I think clinically that's what many people are seeing now, you know, it, it, it's not about just, you know, adding just, you know, obviously these, you know, popular seven to ten probiotics that you find in your store, you know, I mean, when you have a, a an overgrowth of something as strong as E. coli, you know, these little bacteriophage, they go in there and they just pick out these bad guys, literally inject their DNA. I, I wish we had a picture of one of yeah, these. Uh, hey, Warren, maybe... Uh, Google one up and, and pull because I think that our audience would be like really, you know. As long like, as at some point I could show a picture of my daughter and I'll, I'll do that for you. Yeah, and actually I see some pictures of Shane's little uh, girls back there behind him. You probably don't even know that. back there. But um, anyways, you know, these little guys inject their DNA and there's a few ways that bacteriophage work, but one is by doing that and then they can actually multiply when they kill that organism, that bacteria, they explode and all these little guys go everywhere. <laughs> That's one way of how they take over and then guess what they do? They start going after the next bacteria. I mean, this is clever. You know, Shane, I mean, listen, this got my interest when I started reading that this is like the way that Russia and some of these other, you know, Eastern Bloc countries, this is their main form of antibiotics and there's a reason for that because here's why. Number one, it doesn't kill good bacteria. It specifically kills, you know, the bacteria that you're trying to target. And here's the other thing. When you give an antibiotic, it only goes so deep, meaning that it gets weaker and weaker as time goes on. So the bacteria only can affect so much, you know, in depth, really. But these guys actually get stronger, you know, and without ruining the good bacteria. So number one, target specific. Number two, goes deeper. And number three, doesn't wreck the good guys. My gosh, I mean, you know, Dr. Shane, I, I have to ask that question. Why in Russia 
is this like you know the number one antibiotic and it's cheap and easy and yet here in the United States we're not utilizing this absolutely amazing technology yeah you know it's it was really a, a convenience factor when they discovered antibiotics like you said it goes after everything wipes out everything everything and you know, at the turn of the century, you know, 20th century, we were all about um, what we call infectious disease, right? That was our, that was our focus. Get rid of it. Get rid of infectious agents entirely. Well, in Russia and Georgia and Ukraine, they, they of course had the same problem, but they stayed on task with the phage. But it was much more difficult challenge because instead of going after a a molecule that you can just shotgun approach it. You, you have to set up a system to cultivate phage, right? You grow them. You have to find a phage for a particular bacterium. So it's time consuming. It, it takes research and thought. And if you show up in critical care with somebody in Georgia, let's say, if they don't have that on hand, they actually can't help you immediately because they would have to grow what you need. And so that's why on the western side of the world, it was not adopted because people weren't putting the time and energy into making phage that would ap appeal to most different scenarios. Well, no, right? So, so it's easier just to throw napalm and just wipe it all out, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now let me ask you this: Can a can, you a, drug, can a drug company um, patent a, a phage and and put it in cell? Uh, I don't know that they can patent them because, uh, as you know. We've been using them since like 1919 was the first case of using them, you know, for a particular condition. So I don't know that you can patent them, but certainly there are moments that I think they might try to convert them into drugs because they are amazing things. They don't, you don't develop resistance, right? And again, when we return to the idea that they're specific, they're natural, right? We When we look for phage, we get them out of natural places like water, like sewer, like our own feces, right? So not to bring that up because that you know some people might gag, but they're they're again they're everywhere. They're in us, they're among us, they're they're throughout the planet and, and we just go to that those places and we allow them to grow, just like you would a ferment. Right? When we want bacteria to grow, we, we create a fermentation. And it's that simple. So it's the same concept with phage. So the nice thing is, is they're harmless to the things that we don't want to harm. They're amazing to re to reterrain your microbiome. So they're essentially a prebiotic, and as a prebiotic, they set the stage for GI health. They're one of the things to set the stage for GI health. Uh, not unlike fiber, not unlike inulin and other foods that we love to to ingest to help build. Our terrain for our microbiome. Uh, they're good for fate or excuse me, skin, right? Skin microbiome. There's a phage that you know we're looking at for skin. So there's all these niches that we want to start offering up as a prebiotic uh, to people like yourself, Dr. Papa. Yeah. Let's let's take a look at some of these guys. So we. Yeah, they're really cute. You got to see them. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Oh, there they are. Oh, why does it keep going away? Can you see it? You have to talk. Click to hide or show participants. Present to everyone. So Shane, what with oh, that? There we go. Uh, good, it's holding with me talking. Shane, why don't you speak to that little guy right there? Yeah. So what you see is you see this little what almost looks like a lunar lander, right? And at the very top, you've got the capsule that holds all of the DNA for that phage. Then you got the legs, and then you got the the little channel. So what the legs do? is the legs are what give it its specificity. Every phage has a different set of legs to attach to a different bacteria. And that's where the specificity comes in. So for the, for the thousands and thousands of bacteria that we care about, there are thousands and thousands of phage that attach to just that bacteria. So it's fairly amazing. So the DNA, like Dr. Pompa described, if you look closely, the DNA then, once this bacteria lands, or excuse me, this phage lands on a bacterium, it punctures the bacteria, injects the phage. And why it would do that is because it wants to reproduce. Phage don't reproduce on their own. They need to reproduce inside the cells of the bacteria. 
So they inject their DNA. The DNA tells the bacterial cell to make a whole bunch of me. And as it does, it replicates inside the bacteria and essentially bursts the bacteria. And like you said, there's now a thousand phage where it started with one. So this speaks to the idea that it can change the microbiome because the microbiome is essentially a biofilm. And if you can get deeper and deeper and deeper, but what happens when you run out of that specific bacteria, that phage simply just washes out of your GI tract into the sewer system. Right. It no longer needs to be there. And then hopefully as you move through the rest of your life and you, and you tackle things like organic foods picked from the earth and you're drinking good water, you're rephaging yourself naturally. You go, you know, you go kayaking and you swim a little bit in, in lakes and streams. Again, you're rephaging yourself naturally. So these things are, they're amazing and they, and they're necessary for us to maintain, you know, our health. So when I was, when I go camping and jump into a stream or, you know, uh, like I used to do in Montana all the time, you know, uh, always, always getting in the water. That was good for my phage zone. It was good for phage. Yeah. yeah phage. You were, you were phage. I, I, was, I was swimming in this nasty uh, lake the other day and a big one attached to my head. And the dang thing was kind of, you know, what do you do when that happens? Does that, was, that was your brain. I mean, that was your head. Dan. Work, but my kid had to rip it off and the legs were, you know, I mean, it's just, these things can get pretty nasty if you're in the wrong water. You're good um, anyway. for a, a Halloween costume now, Dan. So here's a, here's a picture of a, a real one, which is pretty cool, right? Yeah. I mean, they really look like that. I mean, you can see. I mean, yeah, look, look above that. I mean, those pictures above that one, those are those are real shots too. I mean, these yeah. things really look like these little Martians, you know? Yeah, right there. The other point is you can see how small they are because the cells they're attaching to are bacteria. And remember, bacteria are compared to our own cells extremely small they're the size of a mitochondria so you know these these things are really really tiny you can also see how delicate they would be look at the legs you break a leg and the guy's out of commission you know this is yeah poor little guy but I mean these things it, it really is amazing you know and I, I think the reason we haven't seen it you know in this country is more for some dollars and cents because I, I think the problem is you know, drug companies uh, making something natural, you know, into their own patent, and uh, you know, I, I think if there was a way to make money for a drug company, I think we would be using more phage, phage than uh, than we are antibiotics. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but and when you you know your doctors that are watching, they they can certainly take a moment, you know, after we're done, and and do a little search you know on phage research and it is a growing trend even in the United States right now because they are so amazing they're for all the same things we talked about earlier it there are no none of the shortcomings with whether it's herbal or or drug you know approaches these guys they're natural they're everywhere so there's there's no harm to humans in fact there's very little there's a few instances where they've found antibodies against them in our bodies, but there's been no reported issues with people having like an allergic reaction, so to speak. Yeah, that's another thing I love about it. You know, you, as a practitioner, you don't have to fear dosing, overdosing, side effects like that. I mean, sometimes people do get a die-off when these suckers go in and uh, they start, you know, wrecking their enemies. Boy, you know, you can get a die-off, which we call Herx reaction, and, you know, get some mild symptoms from the die-off of that particular bacteria. You know, I, I have to say, you, you know, you kind of glossed over something. You know, a big problem with people trying to get rid of, you know, E. coli and other gut pathogens is that they get into the microbiome, which the microbiome is in all of us. I'm sorry, the biofilm. The a biofilm is in all of us. It protects our good bacteria. You know, they can pull back into this, this biofilm and protect itself from, you know, our, you know, antibodies and, you know, the things in our body, even our acids and things. But the problem is when the bad guys overtake that biofilm, it's very difficult with herbals, oftentimes antibiotics, anything that you're trying to kill with to get into that biofilm. These little guys get in there, right, Shane? Yeah, so based on that, you know, again, that description where you have one, becomes a thousand, becomes a million, and they're only going after the, the, their particular, what we call host, 
yeah, they'll move right through a system of bacteria because they, as they explode one bacteria, they release a thousand more. So they grow exponentially. Everything else, as you mentioned, dilutes, right? It gets diluted as it goes. So it exponentially gets lesser where these ex exponentially get larger. And then in the end, when they run out of hosts, they move on. You know, they move back into nature, back through the sewer systems. And, you know, it, just a funny story. We, the, the company we're working with, when we look at different phage, we, the samples we're collecting, or they've collected, I should say, and then we start to study, are mostly sewer system samples from around the world because they are so important. It's important for us to be looking at the prebiotics that are related to humans, and those prebiotics, of course, are going to be found in the sewer systems because they're, they were at one time in us, right? They were part of our own uh, microbiota around the world, so it's the best place to look, right? If we looked in the oceans, it's, of course, you're looking for phage that would be for every bacterium, right? The, the ocean is full of phage. That's too many. So we focus on the human phage, which are tend to be found in human feces, right? Human skin and so on. Well, you know, it's interesting. I found an article, and uh, they were talking about, and, you know, we've talked a little bit about fecal microbial transplants, taking a human sample of bacteria from one person and giving it to another, and it's, it's life-saving in the area of C. diff. Um, and obviously I, many other conditions, you know, literally there are certain bacteria in humans, as we're talking about, um, and in this case viruses and, and other organisms, that you just can never put in a pill. Well, you know, these people doing this fecal microbial transplant from one human to another, you know, the article was talking about that they believe that the, these phage are the reason why these things are so effective. I mean, the, I believe it could be, it's the phage, it's this, it's that. But again, uh, the phage plays such an important role. You know, in you, in me, in this person, there's so many of these phage, uh, you know, in so many of these microorganisms, you know, that literally you put them in someone else. So it doesn't surprise me what you said about the sewer system. You know, it's yeah. when people are getting their life saved by a fecal transplant from one human to the next, I'm sure the phage, as in this article stated, play a significant role in why that's so effective. Yeah, and I hope that phage stays a part of the natural products world instead of moving, you know, out of that world into, you know, whether you call it the drug world or what, what have you, but because they really are, they're no different than fiber, they're no different than, you know, other elements of what we need to engage in, you know, fermented foods and healthy cooking and, you know, pulling the carrot out of the soil, brushing it off, you know, rinsing it slightly, and then going, you know, eating it because it's still covered in, well, good soil, mind you, covered in bacteria that you want and the prebiotics you need. Yeah. yeah. That's why when you're fermenting, you don't wash your vegetables because right. if you do that, you wash off the bacteria you're looking to culture, right. um, phage, um, as well. So that's why you un unrinsed um, organic uh, vegetables is the way to go with fermentation. You know, a 180-degree concept that we are always blowing up, if you will, uh, myth-busting, you know, is this whole, you know, topic of trying to kill off everything, right? Everyone's very into, if you go into every school on the planet, there's always the bottle of puree, right? There's always the bottle of basically killers that everyone's putting on their hands constantly, right? I mean, all the time, all the time. You know, and, and again, I, you know, we have... That was very popular. Science has really moved away from that in many ways, you know, and yet it's still, you know, happening that people really are thinking kill, kill, kill because that was very popular at the turn of the century, you know, and in the public's eye it still is. You know, let's run from every virus. Let's run from every bacteria. On the scientific end, we know that's impossible. Matter of fact, the people who don't get sick have a very good microbiome starting on their skin, starting in their mouths, you know, starting in their ears, their eyes. And, you know, they are very comfortable around all types of different bacteria and viruses and they don't get sick because their balance is so good. That's so right. we come in there with the hand sanitizers or the, the triclosan and every soap that we use, we're really disturbing that, that microbiome, our first line of defense, correct? That's right. And you're probably disturbing 
your virome, which is, of course, the phage and the other natural viruses on you. So it, I'm really glad you pointed that out because the killing piece is, is where people want to naturally go, and I don't want phage to be thought of as even that, right? They're, they're there to reset the microbiome terrain, so they're a prebiotic, right. not a killing tool because I think a killing tool, you know, when, you know we, even when we talk about E. coli, E. coli is, many E. coli strains are friendly to us. They, they absolutely inhabit us and they become part of the normal microbiota. So even when we look at phage products to work with our terrain, we're avoiding good E. coli, just so you know. We're avoid, avoiding good versions of what people have, have demonized because we need them. We, so this really, you made the point brilliantly that we really want to benefit the terrain for the prebiotic. We're not going after killing or any antibiotic effects because that is the wrong approach. The, the hygiene hypothesis, which you mentioned, is where people went too far and people are chronically ill. And then what happens is it takes you years to get your microbiota back. And as you mentioned earlier today, once that's dysfunctional, you're dealing with now physiological problems, not bacteriological problems, right? Because yeah. when you destroy the, the bacterial issue or the bacteria that you need it, you now have true physiological issues that were being fed and, and maintained by the bacteria. You know, so is this, is this a good argument for not bathing then? Is it so I can not bathe anymore or shower? Right? Yeah. Well, there is an argument to that, yes. But, but you know what? But that's a good point, right? Yeah, you bathe and you use just a, a real good natural soap, you know, which utilizes fatty acids, etc. You know, you're not knocking down your good bacteria. It's not going to kill, you know, your microbiome off. But when you're using soaps with triclosan, which are basically, you know, insectic I mean, literally insecticides, if you will, you can use them as such. Uh, you know, even you know, even killing uh, herbs. I mean, they're herbicides for goodness sakes. Uh, and they're putting it in all these soaps. So anytime you see antibacterial on a soap, beware. You're killing your good guys as well. Right. No, but I, I think this is a really important topic, though, Shane, because think about what's happening today. I, it's, you'd be hard-pressed to find a human today that hasn't been on many rounds of antibiotics. There's a time and a place. We both would acknowledge that, right? But yeah. many rounds of antibiotics for all the wrong reasons, right? You know, whether it's a simple sore throat, that, you know, they're giving you antibiotic because they're worried about strep or a simple earache or this and that. You know, I didn't grow up that way. That's for darn sure. You know, but here's the deal. You know, we're putting people on antibiotic after antibiotic. They're using all these hand sanitizers. They're using antibacterial everything. It's all around. They're antibacterial every surface in their house. You know, and I, at the top of the show, I made the point that your microbiome affects the way your brain works, the way, obviously, your gut works, and even how your immune system works. We can tie it into almost every process in the body. Yep. So we are disrupting this important thing that shares these bacteria in your gut and on your skin share their DNA with your bacteria, with your immune system, with your cells, even to make cells, um, to make other cells and other immune cells. And my gosh, I mean, it's amazing today, you know, that it, but it's not. I mean, it, it really gives an explanation of why people have to go from one antibiotic to the next and this thing and that thing, and they're sick all the time. I mean, it's a microbiome dis disrupted world. It is. And you, and, and you made a point that you could actually be helping another industry in what you just said. It just occurred to me, not only are we we're becoming more prudent with what goes into our own bodies, right? We're becoming more prudent about how often we we want to engage in an antibiotic. You're telling, you're telling your patients, you know, don't engage in it if it's not critical. However, there's still a huge source on the planet of antibiotic abuse, and that's in the animals, right? In in our food supply. So what you just you just gave maybe someone that is friends with someone that raises cattle on this show, that they need to look at the animal's microbiome, the animal's phage, you know, maybe phage products they get their hands on, so that they're not sh shooting their animals full of things that end up in our food and our water supply, because that is now one of the one of the leading sources of antibiotics in the environment is through you know the animal world that we want to keep in check, right? Yeah. 
Well, you know, actually, I'm gentle, but you, you just gave someone on your show an idea to go out and work in a different world to help us all out. Well, you know, it's funny because they actually use phage <clears throat> in the animal world in the sense of you, you, you have the meat, infection becomes a big problem, right? right. They have raw meat hanging around. Well, they spray it with phage um, because it's harmless to humans right. and kills, you know, kills instantly. So, uh, matter of fact, I, I have to say that, and that kind of leads me into where I wanted to go. Uh, one of your latest creations um, was a salmonella phage that it should be in every kitchen in America. Uh, explain. There it is. I have explain it. What it is? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. That's, so you know, one of the for the it. fermenters on the planet. And of course, you know, Dr. Pop and I both and, and Warren hang out with a, a young lady by the name of Sarika. She's a fermenting wizard. And, you know, when we were talking to her, salmonella tends to be an issue with sometimes organic food, food prep areas, and so on. So yeah, what you just said is you could you can take what Warren just did on a surface, on a on a plate, you know, or on a on a dish, because it is just a phage. It's a pre on your hands, right? You could do on your hands. Yeah. Oh, he's even got this. How this about my face? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it is completely harmless, and it's my eyes. Is that is that fine? Well, I don't. My, you know, my eye bone. Like yeah, Warren, that's not a good idea. But uh, you know, the great thing about that is you, you're right. You you can now level the playing field with something like salmonella. Unfortunately, salmonella is never really a friendly guy, unlike E. coli. But yeah, so when you're talking about food prep and other things, you've now got a tool that allows you to, and for those of you that do ferment, it's, it's challenging but quite exciting. This is a, a tool uh, in, one, in one way. You can use it as a prebiotic. You can use it as a pre-food prebiotic, so to speak. So what is it? It's a phage that is, actually it's a grouping of phages, just so you know, that is specifically grown to target salmonella, right? So they're ju it's just salmonella. So if you're trying to create a prebiotic environment for, let's say, staff, this isn't going to work, right? This is, remember, they're very, very specific. And, they're, and that's what makes them brilliant. It also makes them a little bit frustrating for people that want the shotgun approach. You know, I want to kill everything. Well, that's a mindset change. This isn't, right. you don't want to be in the mindset of kill everything. In fact, the hygiene hypothesis shows, as Dr. Bumpa said, the more we do it, the more sickly we become as an environment, which means we have to do it more, right? The more you, the more sickly you become, the more you have to be worried about what you're going to come up against because now you're in trouble immunologically. Your immune system's weak. You have no, you haven't, te you haven't essentially trained your body to become tough, to see the environment and react appropriately. You've been aseptic. So the first time you come in contact with essentially a weak pathogen, you could you could be on your back for a week, right? It, it's an opposite thinking, Shane. Look, you know, I went this whole year. I was around so much sickness. You know, you have five kids; they're always sick. I mean, you know, because they're around schools, right? And my kids, you know, they they don't get sick as often as as other kids, no doubt. But I mean, you know, they were around me, you know, wiping it on me, sneezing in my face. You know, not once I didn't get one cold. I didn't get one flu. I didn't, you know, I mean, nothing. Or if you did, or if you did, you took a nap and you were better. Yeah, if you start exactly. feeling like a little I, I, tired I, I, or. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe I'm getting never once. You know, uh, I think my kids were trying to get me sick at one point. You know, because um, they they were like, you know, you're the last to go. You're gonna get this one. You're gonna get this one. You know, and and I don't worry about not drinking out of their glasses. If they have a full guy, drink out of it. I, you know, honestly, I. I think because I purposely oftentimes. <laughs> I used to think you were nuts, Doctor Pompa. Just so you know, ooh, back in the day ooh. when I first met you. What's that? When I first met you, Dan, I was all freaked out, like how you lived your life. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just don't worry about it. It's all over anyway. And you're like eating their food, and I'm like, I'm washing my hands, doing my, you know, my '80s training from you know, growing up and everything you learned on TV yeah. and washing your hands and not touching things and. Now I don't care, you know. I don't yeah. purposely like you run through sneezes, but um, I'm not afraid anymore. No, I mean, listen. I, I if you had a if you don't have a good immune system yet, then I, I wouldn't uh, practice my habits because um, <laughs> most likely you will overwhelm your immune system. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, and I travel a lot too, right? So I mean, I have these snotty people sitting next to me, and I'm just going, eh, you know, uh, no big deal. I'm, not, I'm really not worried. Uh, even you know, our dogs are always you know in our bed licking our mouths. You know, that's the other thing. When you look at the studies, gross. You grow up on farms. People who grow up on farms have the greatest microbiomes in the world. Yeah. I mean, these people are exposed to animals constantly. You know, and it, it's funny. You know, I always say my father. My father was the bricklayer who knew nothing about nutrition, but yet knew everything. My father always said, it's good if your dog licks you in the mouth. <laughs> so he always, somehow, that guy just knew it, man. I mean, honestly, my father was like a big, you know, not, not worried about like uh, the typical things that someone coming out of his generation were worried about. I don't know. He just had that intuitive spirit about them. Drinking out of the irrigation ditch, that kind of let stuff. Me, let yeah. me go get a bottle of EC. I, I, ha I actually have it here. Oh, okay. um, so here, here is uh, one of Dr. Shane's creation, um, EC. And then the other one is SI. I've been spraying SI on my skin. That's why I have a little spray bottle top that they gave us. And yeah. EC. Yeah, I mean, I, both of those in your kitchen obviously are fantastic. And and, and Maybe Jim, they could how, take these on Naked that? and Afraid. You could sneak them on the show, Naked and Afraid, and they could put EC and SI you know, in the water before they get yeah, sick and don't have to get carted off. I, Shane, clinically, you know, I, I use both of those to go in first you know, as a prebiotic, just as you said, and, and just basically open up. You know, because I don't, you know, all my bacterial work, which you know I love to do, it, it, <laughs> so many people have overgrowth of E. coli and, uh, you know, have too much E. coli and, I don't care what bacteria you give them. You can eat all the ferments you want. You can take all the you know good bacteria that you want, and it just simply will not take root. Um, you know, with those overgrowths like that, especially if you call it because they're so dang strong. But when you go in ahead of time, you know, with some of those guys, now you just set the stage for your good guys to take root. You know, I, I don't know the analogy what that would be for gardening because. I am not a gardener or planting anything. I plant typically doesn't take root, but uh, you know that's you know it just kind of makes that soil that perfect soil, so to speak, so that you know all your good plants can rise up. That's, that's why a lot of these people, when they you know take do ferments and they have done this, I take probiotics and they're like, my gut still, I'm still constipated, I'm still sick, still bloated, you know, still can't eat certain foods. Um, you know, the the virum could be off. They you know they have a well, not their virum as much, but they don't have enough. They have too many of these, uh, you know, bad bacteria. So no matter how much they eat, they're still not able to, uh, di you know, digest food and bloat and you know all these different things. And of course, constipation is really important too. With if you're missing certain bacteria um, and inflammation, you know, that that happens in your colon. Yeah, and and what you're referring to is the wonderful connection between the gut and the brain, right? Yeah. And if, that, if if the gut isn't telling the brain to function properly, then the brain's not sending messages to do peristalsis and other amazing things. But I want to circle around real quick. Uh, you know, when you mention things like, you know, Dr. Pompa with the lifestyle, and I want to remind everyone that this is, you know, these are two, I wish I had a thousand phage to offer everybody, but we really only have two at the moment. So really, to be prudent, you still want to do all the other things that we recommend regarding the microbiome, right? We still want all those other recommendations. These are two tools, but they're very specific tools, and they're just the beginning. They're just the beginning. The microbiome is the new frontier. I mean, it really is. You know, you and I have been talking about it for a while with respect to cellular healing, but we're just at the tip of the iceberg. So if we keep pushing the frontiers of what to do next, you're going to make huge strides in your doctor's practices, right? Because we're just beginning this process. We're just beginning to know what it means to deal with phage and and microbiome bacteria and environment and prebiotics, right? There's there's a whole new message to be said about what we eat and why we eat it. You know, and that's that's going to be the new frontier that you know I hope you and I can tap into. You and I have talked a little bit about prebiotics. I, I'm, you and I have discussed that I think that some of those herbs we eat aren't about the medicinal properties physiologically, but about the medicinal properties to the, to the bacteria. It never even makes it into our body. It changes our bacteria enough that they convert it into things they need 
to grow and to and it's all those things that we've given up over time because we've decided that we want pre-processed food and we don't like to hang out on the farm, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I, I think you just raised one more good point, and it's you know today, I, I think the focus is on the macrobiotic foods, right? I mean, we eat our vegetables and you know good grass-fed meats and these things, but you know as humans, we're not eating the herbs uh, that we used to eat. You know, we're not eating a lot of these things that really have a major impact on our microbiome and our cells, you know, at the cellular level. Uh, you know, the one thing I love about systemic formulas and every formula you make, you always have a combination of nutrition, well, I shouldn't say always, most often, combination of nutrition, you know, and what you have named the herbolomic, herbolomic component to that formula, you know, meaning that certain herbs, you know, that target certain function as well. So it's really, look, I, you know, when we look at God's medicine, people say food, but really it's the herbs. Herbs are really, you know, God's medicine. Yeah, absolutely. Biblically, yeah. And, you know, you, you do this, com you know, combination and systemic, you know, is really known for that, uh, you know, that combination. And, and yeah. you know, I have to say that as your grandpa, people love stories. Um, you know, he was the Doc Wheelwright that years ago uh, formulated you know, he's the guy that what didn't have a biochemistry degree. Uh, Shane does, folks that are watching. But his grandfather did. He just kind of traveled the world and uh, basically learned from the world, uh, aborigines, tribes. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, if your mom, who was, you know, basically his daughter, not basically, was his daughter, uh, she would tell stories just saying he would just, you know, all of a sudden he'd be gone. I mean, yeah. for months at a time, right? I mean, do you, I, I'm sure yeah. you don't recall that. Well, I do, I do recall because there uh, wasn't very many Christmases I would see him, right? Yeah. In fact, there was one time they had to call Coast Guards in other countries to find him because they really needed to find him once. So they had to start going through, you know, government agencies in a different country to actually track him down because we needed him back here. Well, yeah. you know, I, I say that to show you. Here's a guy that gained his knowledge. I mean, brilliant guy, right? I mean, you know, most yeah. people you know, would have trouble having certain conversations with him, you know, went and learned from the world. I mean, gone. I mean, just, you know, just yeah. those types, right? And then here you come, you know, the grandson, um, with that brilliance, man. I mean, you know I have so much respect for your brain. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. You guys, you know, you, you bring the clinical element to the story, and I bring the big words just to confuse people, right, like herbalomics. You know, that's, that's my job is just to confuse people. No, no, you do, you do it. I always say that Shane's not your average biochemist. He he actually can communicate. Uh, <laughs> sure, we can. Yeah, but uh, hey, w you know, with all that said, and, and like I said, Shane, I, you and I have worked. You know, we both have such an interest in the cell. Um, you know, and really, we need to bring you on this show more often and talk about more products because I I think our our viewing audience is a really really educated audience, honestly, and, and they would yeah, love, they love this stuff more than biochemistry. Yeah. You know, but so where are we going next with phage? You know, I mean, uh, I've given you a list of uh, bacteria that I know are associated with autoimmunes, like Crohn's and colitis, and you know, you know, that's down the road. But um, what's what's coming up next? So the, the next plan is we're trying to. So because it is a costly endeavor, we're going after the ones that we don't have to redesign the growing process. So just to give you guys another little bit of a nerdy information. In order to grow a phage, you have to be able to grow the bacteria they live on. So imagine uh, a big brewer's vat, right? We fill that brewer's vat full of the organism that you want to grow the phage on. So for example, salmonella, let's just say. You need to grow that whole vat, let's say it's 500 gallons full of salmonella. You add your phage, and then a few days later you can harvest the phage because it's, it's completely consumed the salmonella. And now you have trillions and trillions of phage that you harvest as useful prebiotic. So the key here is you have to grow the bacteria in order to grow the phage. And so we've had to look at key bacteria that are easy to grow right now, technologically speaking, practically speaking. Uh, some of the ones that we're looking at next are the last of the easy ones is going to be staph, right? So staph aureus, staphylococcus aureus. This is a skin microbiome issue, right? We want to keep the skin healthy. So there's, there's various species of Staph aureus. Some of them we refer to as MRSA, right? They're methicillin resistant. 
means that there's antibiotics called methicillin that won't kill them, and there's others. Well, Phage doesn't care, right? They so we're going to be that's a that one can be grown with oxygen in the air, and that's going to be our next go around. Beyond that, we're working on the technology to grow what are called anaerobes. Oh, I can't wait! That, that don't use oxygen, but we're having to redesign that vat that I mentioned because that vat pumps oxygen in. In order get to ones that. pump pump nitrogen in. Right. So exactly, we got to we got to pump in things that they like and keep things out that they don't like oxygen. So it's a little more technically challenging, so it's down the road a little bit. But each time we do this, we get better at doing it, too. We get smarter about it. Well, I, I have to ask you this. Uh, Charlie is a chemist who I love there that works down there at Systemic. How's Charlie doing with all this growing of bacteria? Yeah, that's, it's funny you mention that. So pretty good. He is a chemist. So what I've done is, as you know, you know, you and I have a couple of concepts we've been playing with. One started with the no-ono cycle. Well, won't go there today. You know, it's just more confusing. But uh, the ono, the no ono cycle led us down the pathway of ADMA, which allowed me to meet people at Utah State. So there's a gentleman there that is becoming more interested in not only the research we're doing with him up there, but he's actually becoming more interested in the microbiome. So he's, I'm trying to coax him away from Utah State to the microbiome project. Is this, a, is this a cellular healing TV job offer? Is this happening yeah, right now? Yeah, it is, yeah. So I'm <clears throat> trying to get him down to Ogden so that he can take over the essentially fecal bacterial project. Mm. And because that's what he, he's better at, it, right? That's just what he does. He's, you know, he works with bacteria and genetics and other amazing things. So uh, I'm in the process of trying to up, raise the bar just a little bit this year. Yeah, well, Charlie's afraid. He's a chemist who's afraid of bacteria. Like, whereas I'm not afraid. You know, yeah. Dr. Pompa, you and I have at least, we've taken him. He was the epitome of the hygiene hypothesis, right? He wouldn't go anywhere without lathering himself in chemicals. So we have taken him from that guy to a guy that spills bacteria on him and doesn't panic, right? He doesn't run into the room and strip down and jump into a shower. So we've we've come a long ways with Charlie. He's that little guy, like the mom with the little um, the little clip, like the uh, climber's clip with the little Purell thing. So yeah, he, yeah, yeah. It. Exactly. he has it on his hanging from his uh, belt loop all the time. Yeah. 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 Before I shake your hand, you know, afterwards. <laughs> well, hey, listen, this is a great topic, Shane. We'll, we're we're gonna have you on more often. Uh, you know, I, I think people are really interested. You know, in some of the, you know, the deeper roots of some of these products honestly and uh, like obviously you can bring that so we really Shane we we just love and appreciate you uh, yeah you thanks know. so much for inviting me it's been a lot of fun Absolutely. we'd never have the products that we have uh, the healing tools you know that we do I mean there are some amazing tools that you've developed and uh, and still developing so we we love you man thank you yeah we love yeah. we all love you and I love you guys you guys are awesome and right. I appreciate it. Shane, the reason I got on the show today was because um, I knew you were going to be on because David you know, does the show. I, I'm a busy guy, and I can't do the show every week anymore. And I just just to hang out with you because we can't – I can't – I know. We need to yeah. hang out this summer at Sunshine, so yeah, this is yeah, nice. So I was, have, I was having a baby, and I want to show a picture, Dr. Pond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, there geez. she is. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. She looks like Rebecca right there. Holy cow. Well, she always looks like Rebecca. Um, <laughs> but there she is, five yeah. days old. There, she's now. Um, I don't know. It'll be two weeks on Saturday. So. Well, I love that they love to be bundled up like that. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that's like a little, like like a little spider got a hold of her and spun yeah. her around, and you know. they love it. You They're unbundle about. them and you let their legs and arms come out, and they freak out. They yeah, do they nothing. do. They do that response. Um, I can't do yeah. it right now because you won't see, but they go. <gasps> you know. Yeah. yeah, that's the way they are in utero, man. You know. Yeah. So that that yeah, would take where they're from. But look at those fingers, you know. Talk about spider fingers. They're the long fingers. She have big hands. She's she's a pro. We she's a swaddler. We swaddle her like crazy. Let's see if there's any more pictures of her. Hey, hey, was that picture back behind you? Is that your little girls? So one of them too? Yeah, yeah, pull that out. Grab that out. Right in the middle. Yeah, that's a that's when my that's when she was small. She's now 16. So come on, go back there and grab that. I'm gonna grab it. Yeah. We're big into family here on Cellular Healing TV. Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, well, it's bigger than I thought. It just kind of yeah. blew up on me. So mine's right here. 
Uh, look at that. Oh, so does she have a little cast on? Yeah, a little cast on. Yeah, she's she's a little she's a little crazy rebel. And uh, how old was she? Also, you can also she's kind of the boss of the group. You know, she's yeah, I can tell. Group. I can tell. Just yeah. I can tell. They're they're all like <laughs> off her lead. How old was she there? Oh, she's only like four, I think, three or four. I mean, she that's just when they start. They started at like three. Both of my girls dancing, and yeah. I've been a dance dad ever since. And I swore to myself that. My kids would be ex sports people, right? They're gonna wakeboard and snowboard and ski, and you know they do they do that, but their passion is dance. So yeah, yeah. I've got those. I've got those kids over there. Over yeah, here. they're the ex extreme. I always wanted to be a dancer, you know. So it's hard. I've tried. It's it's really difficult. I was being sarcastic. I was being serious. It's hard. <laughs> like Lauren those piano legs. He, he's not dancing. And he's not getting those legs high enough. Nope. But uh, I guess I could have been the dancer of the group here with these these legs. Oh yeah. Well, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, listen, we could regress here really quick. You know, yeah, we I, have, we it, have. Dane's like a brother to us, so it could it could go downhill fast. You know, speaking of wakeboarding, I was going to go there. How you slammed me and slapped me on my face first oh, time yeah. I wakeboarded. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to do wow. that. But that was I your, was uh, there. I was there. I you only do it that. once, and then you. Everyone on the lake heard a slap. Yeah, and that was Papa's face hitting the water. Uh, watching that toe edge. You got to watch that toe edge. Yeah, I didn't even know what you meant by toe edge until now. <laughs> All right, well let's do. <laughs> We're gonna have you. Bye fire. <laughs> All right. Healing TV. Happy Fourth of July. Have a great weekend. Go eat some. Jump in some lakes. Get some fudge. Have some fun. Um, and be safe. God bless. Yeah. Take care. Thank you all. Thanks, Doctor Shane. Thank <laughs> you.